Morning uh, or afternoon, even everybody. Um, thank you for taking time to come and sit down and uh, and, and listen. Um, my name is Rob Brown. I come from a company called Oki. Um, just in case you haven't heard of us, uh, we're actually a Japanese company founded in 1881 um, by a gentleman by the name of Kibitara Oki, um, and we basically commercialised the telephone. So Mr. Bell invented it, um, and we turned it into kind of production reality. From there, we've gone through. Um, traffic light systems, software, facial recognition systems, and printers. Um, so we're, we're a high uh, technology, leading technology company um, and manufacturer. Um, so what do I, I, I want to talk to you about today? Well, really it's about the idea of the paperless office. Um, and maybe it should be less paper rather than paperless. Um, clicker. Sorry, there we go. Thank you. So, what did we all think the office of the future was going to look like a, a, a few years ago? Um, maybe something like this. You know, it's, it, it's all a bit kind of Tom Cruise, Vanilla Sky-esque. You know, he's dragging documents in digitally from here and there and sizing them and shaping them and so on and so forth. Um, is that real? Uh, I think part of it might be if you think about the use of iPads and iPhones and tablets and um, the way we, we now use documents and, and uh, interact with, uh, with digital documents. Um, I guess the, the, the thing is, what does it mean for you as a, an individual? Um, the reality is, is that, yes, we're printing less, but we're dealing with more data. On a day-to-day -day basis, more and more data is being spread around the, the, the globe digitally. Um, at some point somewhere, that is going to result in, in printed output. Um, we're going to need to think about how we integrate with mobile devices, um, iPads, iPhones, Android devices. Um, and we need to think about the workflow that's involved with document management and the digitization of those documents. But I'll, I'll come on and, and talk about that in, in a bit. So the reality versus the office of the future, as everybody thought it would be, is much more like this. We're creatures of, of, of habit. Organizations are still heavily reliant on paper. Um, me and myself today on the train on the way up here, I'm still scribbling notes on a piece of paper. Um, it's something that isn't going to go away, but how we use it may well change. <coughs> there seems to be more and more uh, uses of, of both the technology and paper. Um, so for example, I took a delivery of my Tesco groceries the other day and I get to sign for it digitally, but the list of what is in there is still on pieces of paper. Um, I was fortunate enough to take delivery of a new car yesterday and the user survey was all done on a tablet and tick boxes, but there was still a need for a signature, uh, a legally binding signature to say I'd received that and, and I was going to pay that off for the next how many months and years and, and, and that was how it was done. So there are still requirements for paper in our day-to-day -day lives and that's not going to go away, be it for um, legal and compliance purposes, be it for invoices. Um, every small business has got to print an invoice to send to their customers. Um, it's got to be paid, um, and there's got to be a workflow involved with how that invoice is processed. Um, but there's also just general office printing. There's letters, communications to clients. Those things aren't just all of a sudden going to become digital and, and nobody's ever going to pick up a piece of paper again. The question really, I think, is how do we view the technology or how should we use print technology and MFPs um, in a smarter fashion and print smarter, as it were. So maybe what we really need to talk about is a paper light office rather than a paperless office. Um, it means, well, what does paper light mean? It means really combining those two things, digital and paper. It's analyzing your business workflow and how uh, you interact with your own business processes for your customers or, or, or your clients. Um, as an example, uh, we work with DFS, the, the furniture chain. They have finance agreements, I'm sure any of you know, if you've ever bought a sofa, something like that, normally it's 0% interest-free credit for you know, three or four years or something. There's a, a requirement for a signature on a piece of paper. The process that they have is, a, a, or had, was a manual one. You fill in the form, it gets sent off to the finance company, generally in the post, um, and that's received if someone's gone out at a weekend to buy a safe, that's received on a Monday morning, uh, and then the credit's done. 
by analysing their workflow and by analysing the refused loan applications or finance agreements, they actually found out, we worked out with them, that we could save them uh, or, or we could uh, increase their business. So by putting a digital loans agreement in place, which meant that whilst the actual agreement still had to be signed with a, 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 a real signature by a real person for legal purposes, that was then scanned in and sent digitally through to the uh, finance house. They would approve it there and then, and at that point, the, the loan agreement was active. DFS previously had been losing business because a customer went out on a Saturday, they signed an agreement first off for a sofa, they then went next door to Mark's Spencer's to buy some lovely matching curtains on their credit card, they then went next door to Curry's or Comet or something and bought a TV, so on and so forth. Those other organisations had a digital process for approving the loans. So DFS's non-digital process, which was reliant on the paper, meant that by the time the paper got to the finance company on the Monday morning, the credit limit had been hit for that individual, and so DFS actually got refused, whereas the other companies that they'd been to with digital process had actually had that signed up. So there was a benefit there to us analyzing their workflow, understanding what the, the printer, the multifunction printer, could do in their workflow to scan the documents in, store them, archive them, and, and then be able to send them off to the organization for approvals. So that's just one example of how scanning, you know, digitizing and distributing documents can actually improve a business. It can in increase the revenues. Um, another example, um, currently talking to an organization, another large furniture retailer, who is saying they want to implement the use of iPads as the point of sale. So in, in the store, they've only got three tills. Actually, they lose business because clients walk out the door because they haven't got enough sales staff who have access to a till. By using an iPad with a point of sale piece of software on it, which will allow them to um, print the design out from the iPad um, uh, use, using mobile device technology on, on the Oki printers, um, and also be able to take the sale there and then use it as another till, instead of having three, they now have eight points of sale that they can use, five iPads and three tills. Again, it's about increasing the revenue for that organization, increasing the sales for them. So I guess the, the, the other thing to think about is public sector. Public sector organizations have been touting the, the, the paperless organization for ages. Jeremy Hunt, the NHS minister or, or public health minister, said the NHS should be paperless by 2015. So we're now at the, what, 19th of November? So, so he's got you know, four or five weeks in which to make it paperless. It's not going to happen. He's already revised that to say it'll be 2018. The reality is, because of how many patients there are, because of the records involved, because of um, other reasons, yes, there'll be lots of digitization, but there will still be paper that's going to be used within the NHS. So it's really about sensibly using print, how it integrates with your ERP systems, your um, invoicing systems, your stock management systems, to make sure you can digitize the documents and work with them in a better fashion. So what does this mean for you? As we said, the, the paperless future is in reality a long way off. We recently conducted a survey of over 2,000 office workers and found out that 92% of them printed at least one document a day. 45% of them printed 10 pages a day. And 15% printed more than 50 pages a day. Now, that tends to, to be quite a widespread there, but if you think of the cost of having a printer and it sits there, it's only used for 3% of its life, the rest of the time it's on standby, it's sucking up energy, it's a cost to a business, but it's a critical function. Um, apparently, 71% of people, uh, employees, use an office printer to print their own personal documents. So there's another cost there to, to your business. How can you control that cost? Do you know how much print costs you? So if you don't know how much it costs you, and you might have an idea of maybe how much paper you buy, maybe how much toner you use, but you have no idea maybe how much you spend on maintenance contracts or how much parts cost or um, how much the other soft costs are um, that add up to the cost of print. Um, there, there is a way to find out the answer, and it's called document management. It's called managed document uh, uh, services, managed print services. What's that? 
really it's about analyzing the data. It's about understanding your organization, what you print, how you use documents, what your workflow is. There are some very simple things that you can do. So 10,000 pages a year printed by an average office worker. If you had a default policy to print that double-sided, you, you've halved it straight away. So there's a, there's a big benefit in there. Um, if you were def to default that color print to mono, color costs you know maybe five times more than mono page does, actually have a default mono policy, all of which can be done to the driver. If you take one thing away from today, it's print mono, print duplex. That way you can actually reduce your current costs. Um, but what else should you look to? Well, the analysis that we've done says that 19 and a half percent of uh, productivity is, is lost by having to reformat documents, to find documents and search for them, um, to change them, to output them. That, that's a large amount. But finally, you also then have to consider the cost, the energy, as I said, of having a print device and, and using it. How do you manage that? Manage print services really seeks to introduce paying for print in the same way that we pay for lots of other things now. We used to using the cloud to access things like software as a service. Well, why not print as a service? Simply pay for what you use rather than having to pay for lots of toner cartridges and parts and maintenance contracts and so on and so forth. Pay for it on a monthly basis based on what you use. Fix your, your costs. And actually by doing that, you can also, uh, uh, on average, reduce those costs by between 20 to 30%. So there's quite a large saving if you, you start to look at managed document services. What does a light bulb have to do with it? Well, we're all probably used to LED benefits. Their uh, light bulbs are efficient, they're reliable, they're robust, high quality, they're accurate. Um, actually, Oki printers use LED lights as, as their imaging source. So instead of a, a laser printer, um, we use LEDs. They are more robust, more reliable, use less energy, cost less to run, so on and so forth. It means that you have a lower CO2, um, it means that you have a higher quality of output, um, it means that you can actually turn it on, like you turn a light bulb on, and expect it to work. It's, it's, it's simple technology. The uh, printers that, that, that we use and the, the uh, technology we use enables you to do a huge amount of things. And this is just a, an example of how the technology works for an idea. But our stand's just over here to the left. And you'll see a raft of things that having um, a simple technology which uses less moving parts gives you. So for example, you can print onto a wide range of different media. So here we have a pre-cut sheet of business cards. It could be shelf edge labels you might use it for. It could be a number of things. You can print your own business cards on demand. You peel it off and, and away you go. Most laser printers, the, because they're not quite as simple, they're not as robust or reliable, and they don't have a straight paper path like we do on the Oki printers, this would jam. It would get stuck. It wouldn't work. There's a whole raft of other types of media you can put through, such as very heavy media, textured cards, pre-creased medias. Um, transfer printing to be able to print t-shirts or print transfer things onto mugs and things like that. So there's a huge amount of benefits that the LED technology brings which you could benefit from as well as your general office print. So the process. Where, where do you start with managed print services or, or managed document service? Typically we would go and audit an organization. It could be a small organization with only 100 employees. It could be an organization with you know, 10,000 employees. It's about having the right device in the right place. And you'll find most organizations have between eight and 10 times more devices than they actually need. Um, it's cost. You, you end up with a huge uh, uh, service risk or, or, or cost. Um, actually, you can consolidate those down, remove lots of the standard A4 mono printer or desktop printer um, in favor of lots of multifunction printers, which is what enables you to be able to scan and put into your digital workflow. Actually, we believe in a balanced deployment. Yes, this will save you costs, but this environment here, where you've still got some desktop printers and some MFPs, is a much better layout of printers. It means that you don't end up with a bottleneck in your business. 
So for example, if you've got a lady in accounts here who prints 10,000 pages a month on her own because she does an invoice run, um, actually, that lady having a printer on her own makes much more sense. By looking at the workflow, by looking at that invoice run, by looking at how the documents are managed and how it's digitized, you're also able to see who prints what, where, and when. And by able to understand who prints what, where, and when, you can actually seek to recharge uh, an internal department, an external client, for what you've printed where and when. You incur a cost. Solicitors have traditionally always done it. They charge for their time. They charge for writing a letter. Well, guess what? They now charge for the letter itself, the printed output that goes out. So it depends what line of business you're in as to where the benefits stand. So what's the process that, that Oki follow? Well, really, the key thing, as I was saying, is conducting an audit, consulting, understand your business process, like we did with DFS, like we did with the other French company, to understand where we could help with the business workflow. But it's then proposing a solution, installing it, uh, making sure that users are trained, making sure they know how to operate a device, that it's networked, that it hooks up to your other document management systems, maybe something like SharePoint, um, and that actually you can then retrieve all the documents that you've scanned and, and shared and put into a workflow. But critically, it's then about managing it. As I said, you turn a light bulb on and you expect it to work. Light bulb goes, well, you've got to go and buy a new light bulb. You've got to fit it, change it, and make it work again. Well, actually, under a management service, you don't have to do it with your printers. We would look after it for you. A managed print service means that something goes wrong, we can see the device remotely, we can access the device and, and work out where the problem is, and we can either dispatch an engineer, or actually we solve 70% of problems over the phone. And that's an interesting point, actually, because if you look at an IT help desk, be it for a small business as a, a, an outsourced cost or indeed a large organization, up to 50% of the calls to that IT help desk are printer-related be it consumables, be it parts, be it service maintenance, print drivers, network issues. So by actually having somebody else manage all that for you, you're taking away a lot of that pain and, and, and that uh, problem. Critically as well, you've then got the fifth step, which is to continually review your needs. You know, future-proofing your environment, putting a multifunction printer in that's capable of printing from a mobile phone or from a tablet, future proofs what you're doing. You may only have a need to print a standard A4 colour document now, but actually maybe in the future you would want to print um, something from a mobile device, or maybe you would want to um, have a, a, a different digital workflow to scan and ar archive your documents. This is, this is the process we would follow ongoing to review your needs and your requirements. So, really, as I said at the start, it's more about less paper than, than paperless, I think. And it's about smarter print printing. It's about implementing the technology to make sure your workflow is a better fit for your business and for your environment. It's about speeding up those processes and actually giving a real benefit to the business. Um, we're just over here. OK, I'll stand if you'd like to come and talk to us. Um, we can demonstrate the, the bits and pieces I've spoken about today. We can demonstrate uh, the wonderful things of, of um, what we call Look What You Can Do, where we've got pre-printed uh, um, sleeves for um, wine boxes and, and bits and pieces, just lots of other things that you can do, like the business card media, which, which may be of interest. So thank you for your time. I'll hand you back to John. OK, thank you very much, Rob. Uh, we've still got a little bit of time if there's any questions for Rob, or if you prefer, obviously, you can... Uh, do it a little less public way. Any questions? No? Okay, well, thank you very much, Rob.